Hey, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get started with AG charts for vanilla JavaScript by building a chart that looks just like this. All of the useful links, like the source code, are in the description. So let's get started. First, create a new folder and open this up in VS Code or your preferred IDE. The next thing we need to do is create a new index.html file that's going to contain all of our HTML code. We can start by configuring the head of this file to include one script tag which we'll use to import the AEG charts community library from our CDN. Next, we'll configure the body. In this case, we'll add a single div and we'll give it the ID my chart, which will be important in just a moment. Now, when we run our app, we should see a nice blank white screen. The last thing to do here is to add a single script tag and import our local JS file, which we're going to call index.js. Now that we've imported this file, we need to create it. So let's create the index.js file, and then we can close our index.html file as we won't be needing this anymore. The first thing we need to do is create a single variable called chart options. This variable or object is gonna contain all of the configuration for our chart, including our data, our series types, and so on and so forth. We'll come back to this in just a moment, but we'll leave it empty for now. The next step is to actually create the chart. So create a new variable, we'll call it chart, and then call the ag charts create method, making sure to pass through the chart options object that we just created as the parameter. And now when we save our app, oh, nothing's being displayed. Well, that's because we haven't configured anything yet. So let's demonstrate how to use the chart options by configuring a very simple property in order to define the container for our chart. We'll do this by introducing the container property and then setting the value to the div that we created earlier through the document.getElementById method and using the myChart ID. Now when we save our application, we can see that we have a placeholder that says no data to be displayed. Again, this is to be expected because we haven't actually provided any data to the chart yet. So let's do this by adding the data property and then supplying some data. Here's some that I've prepared earlier. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to be creating a combination chart that visualizes the correlation between the average temperature and the number of ice cream sales of any given month. A very contrived example, we know, but one that's unlikely to cause any confusion. At this point, you've probably noticed that even though we've supplied some data to the chart, nothing's being displayed yet. And that's because we haven't told the chart how we want that data to be displayed. So let's do this by introducing the series property. The series property takes an array of objects where each object refers to one series to be displayed on the chart. Let's start by configuring our first series with a new object. We'll set the type to bar to display a bar chart. We'll set the X key to the month to display the month along the X axis. And we'll set the Y key to ice cream sales to be displayed along the Y axis. And now when we save our application, we can see a very basic bar chart has been displayed on the right hand side. Now, we could just leave this here, but we're going to take things a step further by introducing a secondary series to our chart. In order to do this, we need to add an additional object to our series array. So let's do that now. Start by adding an additional object to the array. Next, we can set the type. This time we're going to set it to line to display a line series. We'll use the same X key as month and this time we'll use the Y key as average temp. Now when we hit save, we should be able to see that a second series has been plotted on our chart, which is this small orange line down here. As you can also see, a legend has now been added, which we can use to toggle the series on and off. At this point, you're probably wondering why it looks like the new series is just running along the bottom of the chart. This isn't actually the case, but because our data points are on two completely different scales, it just gives this illusion. So to combat this, we need to introduce a secondary axis via the axes property. The axis property takes an array of objects where each object refers to one of the four axes, top, left, bottom, or right. We'll start by configuring the bottom axis by adding a new object and setting the position to bottom. In this case, we'll also add a type and we'll set this to category because we're displaying the month along the bottom or X axis, which is categorical. Next, we'll add another object, this time to configure the left axis by setting the position to left. The type will be number this time, 
and that's because we're going to set the keys property to ice cream sales, which is a numerical value, essentially telling the chart we want to plot the ice cream sales on the left hand side y axis. Then we can rinse and repeat for the right axis by changing the position to right and setting the keys to average temp. Now when we save our application, we should see that our secondary axis is now being used to plot the average temperature on, which gives a much nicer visual representation of our data. Next, all that's left to do is style our chart. We'll start simply by adding a title and subtitle. Add the title property to the chart options and then set the text to ice cream sales versus average temperature. Then we can simply rinse and repeat, but for the subtitle property, this time making sure to set the text as 2022 data. Now, when we save our application, we can see that a nice title and subtitle is displayed just above the chart. Next, we want to configure the legend. So in order to do this, we use the legend property. We can then change the position of the legend through the position property. In this case, we'll set it to right to move the legend to the right hand side of the chart, which we can see has taken effect. Next, wouldn't it be nice that we had a human readable label rather than taking the Y key name directly? Well, we can do this by adding the Y name property to our series. And in this case, we'll just call it ice cream sales. And as we can see, our legend label is now nicely formatted. We can then do the same thing with the average temperature series, updating the name to average temp. The last thing we're going to show you how to do is to update these axis labels here. Currently, it's just taking our data set and displaying it directly, but we can customize this by adding the label property to each one of our axes. We'll start by adding the label to the average temperature or right hand side axes, and then we'll add the formatter property, which takes a function which receives parameters regarding the axis label. And then we can use this function to format the axis labels. We'll start by just returning the current value of the axis label to show that this formatter is not currently doing anything. And you can see that nothing's changed on the chart. However, if we add a string to the end to indicate that these values are in fact degrees Celsius, we can see there that this has been appended onto the end of every la label. All that's left to do at this point is rinse and repeat for the left hand side or ice cream sales axis. This time we'll parse the value as a float, and then we'll use the to locale helper function in order to format this value for us. And there we go. We now have a completely formatted, configured and built chart with AG charts community in JavaScript in just over 60 lines of code and just under eight minutes. Thanks very much for your time today. We hope you enjoyed the tutorial. We hope you like the product. Till next time, bye. Thank you.